I mean, don't you see? The so-called laws of nature are nothing more than a description of how you, you act. They're, they're merely a description, not a prescription of how you should act, or a power or a force which compels or determines your acts. To be, to be valid, a law of nature must take into account how in fact you do act, or, if you like, how you choose to act. So you're saying that I am incapable of determining to act against natural law? Interesting. You have twice now used the phrase determined to act instead of chosen to act. This identification is quite common. One often uses the statement, I am determined to do this, synonymously with, I have chosen to do this. This very psychological identification should reveal that determinism and choice are much closer than they might appear. Of course, you might say that the doctrine of free will says that it is you who are doing the determining, whereas the doctrine of determinism appears to say that your acts are determined by something apparently outside of you. But the confusion is largely caused by your division of reality into the you and the not you. Really now, just where do you leave off and the rest of the universe begin? Or where does the rest of the universe leave off and you begin? Once you can see the so-called you and the so-called nature as a continuous whole, then you can never again be bothered by such questions as whether it is you who are controlling nature or nature who is controlling you. And so the mix-up of free will versus determinism will be gone. If I may use a crude analogy, imagine two bodies moving towards each other by virtue of gravitational attraction. Each body, if sentient, might wonder whether it is he or the other fellow who is exerting the force. In a way, it's both, and in a way, it's neither. It's best to say that it is the configuration of the two which is crucial. Yes, okay, but you said that this whole discussion, discussion was based on some huge misunderstanding. You still haven't told me what this misunderstanding is. The whole idea that I could have possibly have created you without free will. You acted as if this were a genuine possibility and wondered why I did not choose it. It never occurred to you that a sentient being without free will is no more conceivable than a physical object which exerts no gravitational attraction? I do have more analogy than you realize between a physical object exerting gravitational attraction and a sentient being exerting free will. Can you honestly even imagine a conscious being without free will? What on earth would it, could it be like? I think that one thing in your life that has misled you so is that you've been told that I gave man the gift of free will. As if I first created man, and then as an afterthought, I said, hey, I should probably give him free will. Maybe you think I have some kind of a paintbrush which I can dab some creatures with free will, oh, here you go, and not others. No, free will is not an extra. It's a part and parcel of the very essence of consciousness. A conscious being without free will is, is simply a metaphysical absurdity. Then why the hell did you play along with me all this time, discussing what I thought was a moral problem, when, as you say, my basic confusion was metaphysical? And because I thought it'd be good therapy for you to get some of this moral poison out of your system. Much of your metaphysical confusion was due to the faulty moral notions, and so it had to be dealt with first. And now, my little friend, we must part. At least until you need me again. I think our little talk will hold you over for quite some time. But don't forget what I told you about trees. I mean, you don't literally have to talk to them if that makes you feel kind of silly. But there's much you can learn from them, as well as from the rocks and streams and other aspects of nature. And there's nothing like a naturalistic orientation to dispel all these morbid thoughts of sin and free will and moral responsibility. I mean, at one stage of history, such notions were <laughs> possibly useful. I mean, I, I'm referring to the days when tyrants had unlimited power and nothing short of fears of hell could conceivably restrain them. But mankind's grown up since then, and this gruesome way of thinking is no longer necessary. Mm -hmm.
You know what? Never mind. Forget it. Dad, I'm waiting for you. Oh, oh, that's right. Sorry, sorry. Uh, do you have your book? Which book did you pick? Uh, I picked this one. Let me see that one. Oh, yes. This is a great one. You know, this was my favorite book. That is really good, though. <laughs> Look at you! Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm coming back in right here. <laughs> you you did too. <laughs> All right, yeah. Okay, that was the end. Anyway, is it? Uh, it was. Excellent job on the singing, though. Thanks. <laughs>